the next five to six months are probably going to be one of the hardest months that we're probably going to be going through. Countries all around the world are bringing back restrictions and lockdowns again to slow the spread of COVID. For example, my hometown in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, they are bringing back restrictions and now they're back in stage two, meaning that all gyms are closed, you can't go in restaurants, um, all cineplexes are closed 100% for the next 28 days. Not to mention that there's also the 14 day quarantine rule where we have to stay home for 14 days when we travel. Pretty much they're saying don't travel. We also got things like social distancing, wear your masks, don't go out necessarily. Pretty much you're being told just to sit at home and do nothing. But there's always an opportunity somewhere, even in this mess and chaos. So today in this video, I'm, I'm gonna be showing you guys two stocks to keep on your watch list from now, which is in October, all the way till March of 2021. All I ask in return is a like and subscribing. If you guys are a new viewer on this channel, here we talk about nutrition, fitness, and investments. My goal here is to make you guys look good, feel good, and get, make some money at the same time. So if you guys dig with that, hit that subscribe button and let's do it together. All right, let's go ahead and start, but you already know the investment glasses must come on. Let's go ahead and start. Please know guys, I am not a financial advisor. Always do your own research before diving into any stock. So the first stock, the ticker symbol is food.to or better known as Good Food Market. Good Food Market is an online grocery company where you can order groceries or even meal kits and they bring it right to your door. And you already know that this business is going to thrive in this type of condition during this pandemic. Based in Montreal, Canada, they deliver all over Canada except for the territories. By looking at their website, uh, we can see that they got quite a lot of options, all the way from easy preps to classic to family and many more. Wow, I could actually make some meal plans from these. Right now, they have over 280,000 active subscribers and this was dated back in August. So now we're in October, so I'm sure it's over 300,000. I mean, we, we don't have any reports yet, but we will have that report soon but I'm pretty sure it's over 300,000. And they are also growing at a 40% rate year over year. I even checked out some of the reviews just to see how the ratings are because obviously grocery store is a lot more tricky to deliver because you know, you got the, you got the, you know, the, the meats, the vegetables, all these fruits. I prefer when I go to grocery stores, I like to pick out my own things. So to get someone to come to my door, with these, with, with you know, hand-picked apples and stuff, they better be good. And based on looking at some reviews, they look to be really positive. All right, so now that we know what the company does, let's go ahead and dive into the financials. First off, let's look at the revenue and the earnings and wow, just look at that growth. Although the earnings are in negative, they are a new company, so I mean, this is, this is very normal. But just look at the demand. And these numbers are before pandemic. So 2016, 2017, 2018, that's just insane. And let's just see how much they've grown year by year. So from 2016 to 2017, their sales grew about 600%. From 2017 to 2018, they grew about 250%. From 2018 to 2019, about 130%. And if we go ahead and look at the trailing 12 months, 247 million is what they are projecting to hit, or that's what the analysts are saying that they're going to hit. But honestly, guys, I think that this is they are lowballing it big time because if we look at the ESP, just look at the ESP analyst expectations. Good food has absolutely been crushing it quarter after quarter after quarter. But let's just go ahead and, and you know put this 247 million as their 2020 sales and let's see what we get. If we compare the 2019 total revenue to the total trailing months of 2020, that's about another 53% increase. But again, I really do believe that they are lowballing it and they're gonna grow much more than that. I mean, guys, everyone's stuck at home. They don't, they're scared to go to the local grocery stores to buy anything. So they're in a very good position right now. All right, let's go ahead and look at the quarterly results and see how that went. Q2 2020 for the first time shows an earning or a net profit, which is really good. But look at the sales. This shows that during all the lockdowns in Q2, good food was in demand. And since now we're back to restrictions and back to stage two, you could imagine the demand right now. I mean, just look at Amazon and you know Alibaba and you know eBay, all these other companies. See how good they're doing right now. Now, moving on to the balance sheet, let's see how healthy this company is. So the current asset is about 90 million, and their liabilities is close to 63 million. And if we divide these numbers, we get about 1.44 ratio, which is amazing, meaning that they can pay off their short-term debt with their short-term assets, which is really good. So let's go ahead and take a look at their total assets and liabilities. Their total asset is 136 million, and the total liabilities is close to 119 million. If you divide those, we get 1.14, which is also really good. It's above one, meaning that they can pay off their total liabilities, 
which is good. Look at the shareholder equity. The shareholder equity is growing year over year as well, which is amazing to see. I like the fact that they were growing even before the pandemic. I mean, this pandemic just gave it a very good push. So it's all a company so far. If we look at the cash flow, they were negative before, but now since you know all this pandemic has happened, and everyone's at home and the demand has reached high levels, I think this will continue for the next six months at least. So let's go see if the price is reasonable to buy right now or not. Right now, the current price as of recording is $9.38. They don't have any PE ratio at the moment because they're not having much of a net income yet. They are a new company, so all the money goes back to reinvesting into the company to grow. Even though they've already made a good net profit in the previous quarter, it's still not enough data to know. But let's look at the bigger picture, the valuation of, of, of the company, which is right now over 600 million. So right now, analysts are saying that by end of 2020, the, they, should be getting, they should be hitting a revenue of 247 million. If we go ahead and divide that by the market cap, we get over 2.5 times sales. It's pretty darn cheap. I mean, let's go ahead and look at their competitor, which is HelloFresh based all the way in Europe, which has a bigger market. Right now, HelloFresh stock price is valued at four times sales, which is still cheap in my opinion but it does go to show you that good food is pretty cheap. Personal thoughts. I bought this stock all the way back when it was at $5.50. And quite honestly, my theory was that when it goes back to winter time, I bought this, I think it was in July or something like that. I'm not too sure, remember? But the price was at, the price was at $5.50. My thesis or my opinion was, or my, my outlook was, is that when it goes to winter, we're definitely gonna see spikes in these cases. It's, you know, especially in Canada where everything gets cold and everyone is at home and, you know everyone's together it's going to it's going it's going to happen so i knew that governments will go back to you know putting some sort of restrictions and you know doing all these things and going back to lockdown so i knew that people are going to be afraid to go out to buy some stuff through either you know malls or grocery stores even and since they're already i'm um, used to ordering online through amazon and other online shopping stores i'm sure that you know buying groceries won't be that much different and so far my 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 opinion has been right so in my opinion this company is a strong buy for the next six months but after let's say the pandemic is over i'm not too sure if this stock is going to be that hype i think we're going to see a a sell-off i think we're going to see a little bit of a sell-off when when the pandemic does come to an end or some sort of vaccine does come out um, only because I only say this only because that this is a grocery company. Now, personally, for me, when I go to a grocery store, I like to pick out my own apples. I like to pick out my own oranges because I like to see what the, you know, I like to see how the state is looking at the results pre pandemic levels. I mean, it was growing at a fast rate. I'm sure after this the whole thing is over, people are going to be used to it. And because of the convenience, this stock could be a long term hold as well. So that's my thoughts on it. All right, so moving on to the second stock, and the second stock has to do something with renewable energy. And guys, I love renewable energy. My personal portfolio is 50, more than 50% of it is all into renewable energy because I am so bullish and I am so sure that renewable energy is going to be the next thing that's going to happen. I mean, we all, we're all we all seeing it right now, what countries are doing, buying solar panels, going ahead with windmills, not windmills, uh, wind solars, wind turbines, all these turbines, all these things that are happening. So I can definitely see that this industry is going to continue to growing, not to mention Tesla, their goal is to have sustainable energy and they're fully electric. So it's, I think renewable energy is going to be a very, very big industry, you know, in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years, years to come. So this stock is called Canadian Solar. The ticker symbol is CSIQ. Now Canadian Solar is a Canadian company, but they are listed in the US stock market, the NASDAQ, which is quite weird but it is what it is Canadian Solar they develop design and manufacture solar panels and I want you guys to look at this chart and I always show this chart when I'm explaining why renewable energy is one of the best investments ever 38% of all electricity generation by 2050 is going to be renewable energy based on what's happening in today's world you know with climate change and global warming I really do believe is going to be much sooner than that now you guys hear me talk a lot about Northland Power and how well positioned they are for the future of renewable energy and how overall i love the business well canadian canadian solar is also in the same position they are actually in a perfect position to grow take a look at this chart by 2050 it shows that 46 percent of all electricity generation will be coming from solar panels this means that more companies are going to be opting in into solar panels and other renewable energy sources and equipment. Now, this could be because solar panels get cheaper over time or, you know, companies want to get more electricity efficient and overall just want to, you know, battle climate change or global warming. Whatever the reason may be, 
I mean, this is incredible. And I don't know about you, but I want in on this. And guys, I'm gonna show you right now how popular and fast growing solar panels are. All right, just watch. Go on to Google and just type in solar panel. Then click on news. I mean, just look at all these recent articles. You got things like LG adds AC model to the Neo onto along with more. You got Ellsworth set to buy all electricity from 11,000 panel. Solar farm, and this was 14 hours ago. I mean, look at all these news just coming back. I mean, these are all happening very recently. You know, and nobody's talking about this. On the news, all you see is, you know, Tesla or COVID. But always behind the scenes, there's something. And honestly, renewable energy is one of those things that work, is working behind the scenes at the moment. And so if we can get on it early as possible, we can get that nice, fantastic return in the future. Now, I did a lot of research with CSIQ because I was really interested to see what this company is doing and if it was a really good stock pick for my portfolio. And so I checked their website. Obviously, you should be checking their websites if you're going to go buy their stock, see exactly what they are. And obviously, it was nothing but solar panels. But what really intrigued me was the global contact. And when I checked global contacts, they had like offices all over the world, meaning that they are exposed to a lot of markets. And I really do like to see that. And that's what really got me interested in the company. The fact that they're all over the world and, you know, they're ready to do business with almost any other neighboring countries where their office is. Market is huge. All right, let's go ahead and look at their income statement. If we look at their revenue and earnings, they seem to be growing overall, but the quarterly sales and profit is more interesting. Quarter one, 2020 was a record, but Q2 2020, I mean, come on, give it a little break, guys. Q2 2020 was when everything was, you know, just, you know, locked down and just don't do anything. It was just a really, really bad quarter for everyone and everywhere, except for Amazon and food.to. Ha, see what I did there? But they still brought on a profit. I mean, that was pretty impressive. It was really good to see that they brought on a profit. And not to mention, guys, they also crushed the last four EPS analyst expectations, which is just absolutely awesome. And what's really interesting about what analysts are saying about 2020 with this company is that they're saying the trailing 12 months is going, they're going to be hitting a revenue just over $3.2 billion, meaning that they are expected to perform better than 2019's results. And their earnings and net income is also expected to be 257 million, which will also be a record as well. And honestly guys, with all this demand going on with you know renewable energy, global warming and all this stuff, I'm not surprised at all. All right, so let's go see how healthy this company is. So their current assets are about 3.2 billion, just about, and their current liabilities is about 2.8 billion, brings it about 1.4 five as the ratio which is great they can pay off their short-term loans which is amazing and the total assets are 5.2 billion and the total liabilities are 3.7 billion making their making their current ratio for long-term debts 1.42 meaning that they can pay it off as well which is amazing let's go ahead and see their shareholder equity and that's also growing year over year meaning that their assets are going higher and higher and their liability is getting less and less and they're having that gap as well and that's how you know the shareholder equity is growing and that's amazing to see for any business now Check out the cash flow, guys. This is where it caught my attention big time, and this is where I literally was that took me off the fence, and I bought quite a bit of shares of this company. The cash flow. For the first time, they are positive, which is something that I love to see in any business. If we look at the previous years, they were completely negative, and if we look at the you know stock chart, it's been up and down a lot, and I think this cash flow has to do a lot about that. But now since they're in the positive, and now we're going to a new era of renewable energy, I see a lot of green things happening. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if the price right now is good to buy. The price right now at the time of recording is $43.91. And the current PE ratio is 10.44, which is honestly cheap. If we look at the book value and compare it to the current market cap, that's only 1.57 times. Guys, that's cheap. If we look at MPI.to or Northland price to book ratio, it's seven. And that company, even at this price right now, it's a great buy. I bought the stock all the way back in the low 30s, and that's when I did all the research. I went deep into it. I wanted to see that if this company was a winner. The only con I have about this company is the fact that, well, it's not this company, it's this industry overall, is the fact that solar panels are getting cheaper year over year over year. And the problem comes with the fact that, you know, revenue will be less over time if the price of solar panel gets cheaper and cheaper but if they go ahead and they increase their volume and if solar panel becomes a very very big thing in the future which i think will and you know it goes crazy there's more demand than supply then obviously the price will increase and if that happens then i think we're going to see a crazy revenue from this company and if that happens this company right now is extremely undervalued so my personal thoughts this company is a strong 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 buy and it's a fantastic long-term hold 
safe company, safe company to put your money in. The growth is there. The future is there. Position extremely well. So these are the two companies that I believe that they're going to do fantastic in the next six months, probably even longer than that. If you guys enjoy this video, because if you guys are here till now, then you guys did enjoy this video. So please hit that like button. That'll help me out a lot. Comment below about these stocks, what your thoughts are, what, what do you guys think of them. I'm happy to have a conversation and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.